This week's episode of Chasing the Whimsy. I'm your host, Ben. I think this is episode 63, possibly, and 64. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the last couple episodes with Ming Chen. Uh, starting off year two, Liam killing it for episode 61 for the last episode of year one. And then Liam's Whimsy with the Z that came out last week. Um, so. Yeah, lots of stuff going on. Uh, live streams are going good. Patreon uh, is up. I think this episode drops like the 29th. The 29th. Yep, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, if you're listening to this as it drops, Patreon is available now. And then if you sign up in July, you'll get like an extra exclusive gift. Uh, real quick, the Patreon, it is, uh, two tiers, a four and a $10 tier. The $10 tier will get you merch, uh, like a gift. And then to qualify for the gift, you must be signed up in the even month. Uh, and then also the odd month and then the odd month I'll send it out. So, um, this being an odd month in July, uh, I'll throw a little extra bonus, something in there for you. Um, before the gift cycle starts. Early, early, early on, Liam and I had a discussion uh, about the different guests we want to have. Liam, early on, said that Other Grandma was the first person um, he wanted to hear more about. And then as we started talking about it, it hit me that I've known my grandmother for 40 years. And that I have never asked <laughs> about much of anything from the original 40, like the first 40. She was an entire person. Like she is a me. Like I have an entire, I have a pretty fun and interesting life. My grandmother has a very fun and interesting life that I know of, which means she has a whole other life that I don't know about. So um, as a, like a, Sorry, this took so long to get to, but uh, we're super excited. Uh, we're going to go ahead and deep dive, deep dive into uh, Other Grandma. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, you were so. All right. So I think we got to gotta change the mindset a little bit because you are Other Grandma. But today, I don't want to know about Grandma. I want to know about Rhea. Rhea the lady. I thought we were going to do younger years. We're going to go way younger, but you were still a Rhea. But, you, but everything before grandma. Okay. So I will no longer refer to you as other grandma today because I don't see you as a grandma. <laughs> oh. I'm going to see you as, I think, we'll do like, we can play around with it, but the uh, ideally, in my head, zero to 20 and we can go a little bit more or less than uh, 20 okay. and then uh in a couple of weeks we'll do another episode and we'll do the, the, the your 20s and 30s and then we'll go we'll finish off this trilogy with life as another grandma okay or as a grandma and then into another grandma that would be my 40s plus. yes yeah. your 40s plus um Tell us a little bit about yourself, name, age, if you're okay, even though technically we had an episode. <laughs> technically, I'm lying this year. I'm telling everyone I'm 80 years old. All right. Um, okay. Except for car problems, I think my life is pretty good. I, uh, I retired last year. Now I dog sit and babysit. Okay. So I walk across the street and babysit. 
uh, two cute little girls in a older nine year old, and um, and they're all cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's my life. Uh, I spend a lot of time out in my yard. Uh, spend time as I can with my family. I take all the time I can get with JJ mm-hmm. because he's going to be uh, 14 soon and he'll be off. <laughs> you know, once they grow up and go away, and they do come back years later, but you know, <laughs> I'll take the young years. Right. Yeah. Like I had with all you kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 80. We're going to go back. All the way. What year were you born? 1943. 1943. That is amazing. Where did we grow up? Tell me a little bit about your your, your families in 43. Uh, I don't remember much before age three. But I do remember being age three and my brother coming home uh, from the hospital. He was just little. Uh, I do remember cutting my sister's hair and my brother's hair, and we made the the back page of the Chicago Tribune uh, for cutting our hair because we were so cute. Hey, when, you, when you have twins and baby and family, yeah, they they uh, told our story. Uh, you know, so you're a twin? I'm a twin, and she's only 11 minutes younger than I am. So you're the oldest but, of the twins. They didn't know my mom was having twins. No? Nope. Uh, <laughs> and she was seven months. Uh, she had us at seven months, so we were premature. I think I was three pounds, I don't know, four ounces, and my sister was three pounds, six ounces, something like that. And uh, after I was born, the doctor left the room. The nurse said, Doctor, come back, come back. There's another one. <laughs> what? They didn't have ultrasounds and things back then. You know, that they... Yeah, we were surprised. We were in the incubator for three months. Uh, my mom, let's see, I think... <sighs> something with the war. My dad was in the Marine Corps. And my mom spent uh, two or three months with him in uh, San Diego, Camp Pendleton, and then she came home to us out of the hospital. But we were we couldn't leave until we were at least five pounds, mm-hmm. so it took us time. Uh, I remember our first apartment. It was upstairs. It was on Bell Road in Chicago, mm-hmm. and we could see Riverview Roller Rink Parachute. Uh, from our back porch, because that's tall. Mm-hmm. You know? So we lived close to Riverview, and I remember going to Riverview Roller Rink with my uncle Al was a, a guard, and he always was roller skating backwards. Um, but we had our own skates and our own little boxes that we put our roller skates in. Uh, let's see, after that school. I remember being in kindergarten. Okay. I remember um, in first grade, we used to help the kindergarten teacher with their little kids. They were a year younger. Right. Yeah. I remember uh, being held back in first grade. I fly in first grade. That's where I get it from. No, actually, I had measles, <laughs> mumps, chicken pox. I had rheumatic fever. <laughs> You grew up in the time before we had the the medicine to get rid of all those things. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Polio, yellow Uh, fever. Yeah. All those Uh, things. Yeah. You mentioned you had a brother. He's uh, younger? Three years younger. He went to the Marine Corps also. My dad was in the Marines. My brother was in the Marines. And what was his name? Ricky. Richard. Richard. But we called him Ricky because he looked like a Ricky. He was cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sibling, so just uh, your twin sister and your brother? Mm-hmm. And your mom, what was her name? Marita. She had a sister, Cecilia, another sister, Teresa, another sister, Florita, brother, Philip, and Ralph. 
Uh, and where did they were all born in in Chicago? Okay. Uh, my grandparents are from Guatemala. Okay, so your your parents were first generation. Yes, in Chicago. Okay, so I'm second generation. Oh, that's interesting. Guatemala. Where's Guatemala? Uh, Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, right before Panama. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, right there. Uh, South America. Yes. And Dad. Um, let's see. He was never home. Uh, he worked at Teletype. Uh, I remember him going to school and getting his master's or whatever. Uh, and I had to be five, six, seven years old. Uh, I think we were three years old when the war ended and he came home. Mm -hmm. And, uh... We are of Spanish descent, and we spoke Spanish. Do you know any of it now? None. You can hear not a lick of it? No. <laughs> Actually, when he came home, he couldn't understand us because we couldn't understand him because he spoke English and right. we spoke Spanish, so it wasn't allowed in the house. Oh, that. because you were born during World War II. Two, he like he, he was literally mom. just he was gone. So my my mom was basically a single mom of two twins, you know, and uh, of course she had a lot of family that it would help. Mm -hmm. Although she never drove until she didn't learn how to drive until I was like nineteen, <laughs> seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, she didn't drive. And what was your dad's name? Tony. Tony. And what descent is he? German. Yeah, okay. How do they meet? I don't know. I really don't know. Because that would ha how long were they married? Uh, they were married in my first twelve years. And then before you, the 12 years? Well, or they only married they, because of you? No. Oh, no, okay. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, she had us, well, uh, then they got they got married. Yeah. They had us. Okay. I mean, she was pregnant. Then he went off to boot camp or whatever. Right. And then there was the war. And then 12 years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they were married 12 years because my, my mom asked us one morning, would you like to live with your dad or would you like to live with me? And it's sad, but my mom years later told me, I don't know about my sister, that um, we didn't even know he was gone. I think he was gone like three or four months. We noticed he wasn't home. <laughs> so you're 12 and you're just like... Yeah. Okay, but... He wasn't there the the three years. He was always busy working masters, so he was he was barely a presence when he was there. Yeah, then he always worked. So mm -hmm. never, we never went on vacation. We never um, did family things. Uh, although we did move close to his mom, so I am. Um, we always had a relationship with with the other grandparents, you mm -hmm. know. Both great sets, yep. moms and dads, but uh, didn't notice that he was gone. So he says, we'll stay with you, Mom. Right. Where else yeah. are we going to go? Yeah. Uh, do you remember any anything in particular post-World War Three? So if your first memories were three, do you, do you remember all of the remember. excitement? The, none. None of the war. The... the uh, None. In the, uh, so it would, it would have been all post-war, but like when all the boys came back? Uh, no. When came, you don't remember any of it? No, because I was three and four and five. Uh, I remember going to kindergarten. And that was, we went out in the world when we went to kindergarten, you mm -hmm. know. But no, none of that. Mm -hmm. Although I did watch a lot of the uh, movies. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they were good. Um, do you know who... Uh, Uria, your sister is Rita. Do where do those names come from? 
Um, my uncle Ralphie said that um, he he made him up or something. Rio in Spanish is river. So when I went to Mexico with Teresa, uh, I found out that Rhea was the feminine of the masculine river. Masculine river would be a stream or a brook. But Rhea also means happy and smiling. So I said, do you mean I'm this happy, smiling, babbling brook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what Rita stands for, but um, I don't know. I think there was a song before we were born called uh, Rio, Rita, Rio, Rita, Rio, Rita, I don't know. I think there was a song with our name. I'd have to research that. Uh -huh. There's no one to ask anymore because my last surviving aunt passed away last year. She was 94 and three quarters. So very, uh, do most of uh, uh, your family live into their 90s? Yes. How old was mom and the other aunts? My mom uh, died at 92, but she could have lasted longer. And they made a mistake in her medication. She developed gout. And gout has something to do with crystals and your bones and stuff. Mm -hmm. and hurting. And, but nobody develops gout at 92, so um, my aunt was 95. I have uh, uncles, all my uncles are in their late 80s and uh, late 80s, early 90s. So we do have the longevity gene, so uh, actually I'm pretty healthy. I just had my yearly physical. I need bone density and whatever test, but... Um, I gained a quarter of an inch. Right. <laughs> you grew? I, I started out 5'4 my whole life. And then, I don't know, about 10 years ago, they said I was 5'2. I said, that's wrong. No, you you, sh you were shrinking. Yeah. So I, I, that came from. I got remeasured. So I had to measure me today and I gained a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. uh, but my sister lost four inches. Oh, she's super tiny now? Yeah, she's five foot. I just, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see her again. Um, why did your family grow up in Chicago? Why? Uh, I mean, because they came from South America. Right. Why as far north as we can go? <laughs> I, I don't know, but that's where my grandmother, grandfather, on okay. mother's side, uh, ended up okay. in Chicago. Uh, now, as a teenager... Or um, preaching, I was a basketball cheerleader. Okay. Um, I I guess I had the right jumps and the moves and and the lungs because you have to shout. Mm -hmm. Remember having laryngitis every weekend. <laughs> but uh, then high school, um, I was a C student. My sister was a B student. Um. I fought for my C. I I enjoyed research and doing homework and stuff like that. Uh, and I loved math. Math. Math was my thing. All you kids, I spend time with you. What's one times one? Right. What's two times two? Uh -huh. um, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, all the, this little little card uh card games that we used to play lots uh, of card games yeah and i do have an affinity for for numbers which is ironic because i am dyslexic but for whatever reason i can semi keep numbers together better than i can letters that's your mother's fault my mom's fault because your mother has photographic memory on numbers did you know that i do know that she was good with numbers very good with numbers um i i once asked her for the telephone number for Pizza place on Seventh Avenue in Union Hills, and she's, "Oh, Mom, I haven't called that in three years. Ah, oh, the number is six zero two, and blah 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 blah." Oh, and that is so funny. Um, I 
literally just re- okay so um we're gonna sidebar this for a second okay. um uh, i was thinking of an episode for Brandon and nikki and i to do again yes and one of the things i came up with like a little game or something was um old old phone numbers and that's mm-hmm. so funny that you said it because i remember so i'm gonna because uh, your phone number hasn't changed to be fair since like 93 <laughs> um, um i don't know when i got my cell i don't know your cell phone number that's the only that's the number that you would know it, um my, yeah my the one ending in 7051 that i've had since the 60s that is crazy i know and they still like that's so cool all right and then um you remember when we lived on Grover's, what the phone number of that one was? Or what it spelled? No. Well, uh, my number was 8505300. It was all in the line. Right. But no. It was 4342229. It spelled Hey Baby. <laughs> Uh, it was uh yeah it was in the time when pagers were still out so we used yeah. to get all these phone numbers of they call us and we eventually found out i think mom asked him was like why the hell do you guys keep calling and they're like oh it spells hey baby uh, on the phone um i wrote one down let's see if mom if you're listening we're gonna ask the girls if they remember the beginning of this number but i'm pretty sure I remember mom's number from when she worked at the uh, NPC. Yeah. And I think it was, it ended in 1726. Maybe. <laughs> Which is weird. But we're going we're gonna to test it out. Mom, let me know if I was close. Um, that's so funny. Sorry, I don't even know where we're at now. I, <laughs> I know in the uh, 90s, I remember my bank account number. 10282802 which I don't have that number anymore. <laughs> uh and it had a change because uh um I changed banks or something. Mm-hmm. But I had that number for years and years. And then uh I remember my lunch ticket number which I used all the way through like elementary school, high school, definitely junior high, high school. Uh, so that's 35 or almost 30 years old now. Mom's work number would be the oldest number that I can remember, if I was correct. Because that would have put us back in 93, which would be. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Um, all right. Let me get back on track. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. You mentioned uh, cutting your your siblings' hair uh, little. What kind of relationship or what kind of kid did you? Um, let's stop real quick. Did you live in a house or an apartment? An apartment. Okay. Third story. I think Chicago typically a lot of yeah. Okay. Uh, what'd you guys do when you were younger? Cutting hair. What would you guys do to help stay entertained? Um, I made friends easily. Um, it was a a nice size uh, apartment complex. There was a gangway, whatever that is. Uh, and the kids would go out and play on their little porches or what. And I had friends, you know, in the building. And and as long as my mom knew where we were, you know, uh, we. Had, play with trucks and cars and I would learn how to go run, run, <laughs> with the cars and whatever. Um, that's about it. Roller skating was a, a lot of it uh, all through uh, grammar school. What kind of movies? You, you mentioned you liked a lot of movies uh, from the that, that 40s, 50s. What are some of your, your favorites? What are your ones to send out? Um... Well, West Side Story was my favorite for many, many, many years. And I just saw the original West Side Story, and I 
wasn't enthralled with it as much as I used to be. <laughs> uh, I remember in teen years, Elvis Presley was, was big. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a real Elvis Presley fan. Uh, but uh, we, in grammar school, we would dance. And we had Jim, we had uh, Jim Lonsbury dance party. We had um, uh, Dick Clark, American Bandstand, and we would dance. We would come home from school, grammar school, and we would dance in the living room. And we all danced. Aunts and moms. Dad was not there. No. He was removed by them. Um, but uh, we, we did a lot of dancing. I hung out on Taylor and Halstead in Chicago, which was kind of like a West Side Story. Yeah. And we danced there also. <laughs> I was in high school. You know. Um, we didn't drink. We didn't smoke. We didn't do drugs. We just danced a lot. So dancing was... was the good old 50s. Yeah, that was uh -huh. the 50s. Because movies back then were, uh, you followed more of the actor than like a particular type of, their particular actor that you liked? Okay, when I was young, grammar school, I remember Lassie. Okay. Okay, that, that was the highlight of my week is watching Lassie. Right. And then you had the Mars guy with the, oh, guy from Mars, I'll have to look that out. Um, it was a program. I remember what's my line. <laughs> I, I remember uh, all the game, the classic game shows, tune and so many numbers, you know, and letter, so many notes. Yeah. With the, were all the family pretty close to each other? Like, like now. We're stones throw away from from everybody but Rhiannon. Were you guys like that? Did y'all in the same building or fairly close? Mm, or yeah. all together? <laughs> yeah. Um, mother's family was South Chicago, so we would drive okay. uh, every week or every other weekend, you know, to Grandma's house, um, then Aunt's house, and. Uh, my one aunt, uh, Therese, uh, sis, she moved to uh, Tucson. Okay. Then my mom decided she was going to move to Phoenix, which is close to Tucson. Mm -hmm. But growing up, um, we always had the, the family things going on. Uh, we lived like in Maywood, Melrose, Franklin Park, Addison, we kept on going further on west. And... Uh, Yeah, the families were close. Cousins, uh, my aunt sis had uh, four kids, and they were all five years apart. So I, we intermingled with them. We still do to this day, because mm -hmm. Doreen lives in Tucson, and uh, I think JJ and I are going to go this fall mm -hmm. on uh, fall break. Going to ride a horse or something. Mm -hmm. Growing up in the in in the fifties in Chicago, what does it look like? Uh, because like today, everything's so busy. Um, what did what did like uh, what do you remember Chicago looking like? Um, oh, in, in... big buildings, and I worked in them. Out of high school, I got a job as a photographer mm -hmm. and um, a hotel photographer which means that they had events. I would take pictures mm -hmm. of conventions and some weddings and uh, people in the lounge. You, you ever see an old time movie with a girl with a big camera on her hip and would, would, would have a, a flash. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> that was me. Uh, yeah. I worked at the Sherman house downstairs at the college inn. Uh, worked at the Palmer house. The Ambassador, um, McCormick Place, which was a huge, 
the karma price was a huge um, uh, uh, place where you hold conventions and things. Where like, oh, like a people. convention center, like yeah, yeah. Yes, it was the karma place, and I would work there. Um, would it be like specifically for those? Uh, was it for the hotel or for the actual like event? Uh, like, were you published anywhere? No. Okay, so you you no. were more just for the hotel. Just for the hotel, but I would go to events to take pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, although, um, probably nobody remembers Irv Cups in it, which was a, a columnist for the Chicago Times, I believe. I took his birthday party. I was the only girl there uh, that they said, shoot, and I did. And there was all men, uh, senators, um, uh, business people, business owners, um, Bob Newhart, who just passed away. He but did. I met him. I worked with him that, that day when I was yeah. at the uh, fair. Um, Do you have any of those old, like, uh, in theory, they would have been property of the... Uh, the hotel, but did you have record? Did you keep copies of any of these things? I used to keep keep the negatives. <laughs> so is there a random box of like old negatives there somewhere? There used to be. There Aww. isn't anymore. Where did they go? Uh, they got lost in divorce. Aww. You know. Uh, that would be interesting. I know. Um, so many uh, entertainers. I did do publicity shots for. Um, uh, a singer, Margaret Whiting. Nobody remembers her either. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I, I had pictures. I did. Uh, I took a picture of Bob Hope, Red Skelton, and Gene Autry. And I was the only photographer that <laughs> got that picture. And my negative went to Playboy. Okay. So my negative to Playboy, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. It took a lot of... I would... I had me and David Jansen uh, picture with him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like the first selfie? <laughs> yeah, somebody <laughs> took a picture. But, yeah. Uh, but I used to take pictures of a lot of movie stars. Uh, so it was a very... Uh, now they say, like, L.A. or New York, uh, very busy, the center of, like, entertainment. Chicago back then was Chicago you uh, there's a, a series on TV now in Chicago and you see the water and you see the bridges going over the water and you see these tall tall buildings and all these lights and you had the subway and then you had the elevated and you had both you had the yeah. subway and the elevated and I used to take that to work and um, it's just the sound of the trains yeah uh, and Windy City is the Windy City because you would walk into the wind and you, you'd be on an angle. Um, and the lights and the Chicago Theater is right there on the corner of State and whatever, Fillmore, I think. Uh, and I just worked a block from there. So, so uh, it was so magic. 50s Chicago was. Then you had Rush Street. What is Rush Street? Uh, it's where all the jazz musicians would go. That's where your entertainment was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, because uh, jazz started coming up real big. Oh, yeah. And that time. Herbie Mann. Uh, Lou, uh, Lou Rawls was one of my favorite singers, but I think that was in the 70s. But, uh, yeah. Chicago was a... It was the place to be back in the 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even now, I think um, it gets overlooked, but I think it still has a fairly uh, like respectable position within like uh, uh, celebrity industries. Right. Plus, they had, well, they had the Cubs and the mm -hmm. Bears and whatever, and the White Sox. Uh, but they had uh, the Science Museum, and they had... Uh, they had two or three different museums that you can go to, uh, and we do field trips in school, you know. And it was to see these mammoth, gigantic 
elephants and things, their bones and whatever. It was all interesting. Very interesting. A lot of culture. Yes. Uh, in Chicago with, with, with everything. The Filipinos had a, their annual um, convention in Chicago. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, and I was a photographer that would shoot those things. I did several the Filipino conventions. Uh, we'll go back growing up. Who cooked? Mom? Mom cooked. But then I was always in the kitchen with mom. Uh, I was always in the kitchen before that with grandma. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when she would make tamales and she would get corn husk and we used to soak them in the bathtub. Yeah. Um, for, I don't know, a day or two or whatever. But making tamales, we that yeah, was a family thing. You know, and you get like four or five people in a row putting the moss up, drying off the leaves and right. getting the moss on them and, get the, and then folding it over and then putting it in the pan and cooking. Uh, I did that a little bit myself, myself, when uh, I was working at Craftmatic. I used to sell tamales. But our tamales are... Uh, they're not the traditional tamale that you have now because we made it with mole, okay. which was the red sauce that we used. And it, and it came out of a jar as far as I know, but I think you can make it because uh, uh, Edmund has made, okay. made mole. Uh, yeah. Um, the, were you guys... Mostly uh, like a, like Spanish cuisine. Um, yeah, mostly Spanish. But uh, my mom's second—I don't know what my first dad ate, father. Uh, but uh, white dude, you know. Um, and I guess he liked meat, potatoes, and vegetables. So we did that also, but. Uh, I know we could eat like kings and queens for a week on like 12 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And that was in the 60s. I know that. I remember going to the grocery store and going shopping. And my mother says, oh, I always found the best is I would price compare mm -hmm. and and uh, get the, the cheaper or the best or whatever. But we always bought Wonder Bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's cer certain things you always buy, like Campbell's. Yes. Pork and beans. Not potions. Craft macaroni. I never. Did, never did macaroni and cheese. It was either homemade. Never did it out of a box. Well, never. if you do, Kraft is the only way to go. You can't do any of the other stuff. Oh, Kraft has got the cheese already melted, right? You just pour the cheese on? There is a version of that, but they also have the powder one. Uh, I don't know, man. I still love it. It's, okay. Uh, I think Nikki uh, kind of said it best. It's just because it's like the second you hear, smell it, and taste it. Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. You're, you're eight right. again. That's right. Uh, do you have anything like that that um, you make or if you eat, it takes you all the way back to, to 53? Yeah, it would be homemade tortillas, which I still make. Um I make homemade tortillas and chumul, which is like um, it's like chili without the beans. Mm -hmm. um, that I eat all the time. Oh, uh, and my mother made what she called chicken fricassee, which was chicken, a gravy, which it took me a long time to do that gravy. And the secret ingredient is celery seed. Uh, Split peas over rice, chicken, gravy, split peas yeah. over rice, which I had yesterday. Still do that. Where'd you? Okay. Mom makes that. Nikki, Rihanna likes it. Yeah. Rihanna still makes it. And I also had, yesterday, I had a Christmas sandwich that Joyce makes. <sighs> uh, yeah, and I ate a little bit of ice. I just enjoyed it so much yesterday. I was trying. Yeah. 
Yeah. I felt bad because I forgot to go over there this morning. I didn't forget. I just I slept in, but I'm going to go over there later. Okay. But, yeah, every once in a while there's that one dish that's like, I'm nine again. Is Chicago constantly moving? Are there, like, cars yes. everywhere? Uh, you, you got the- like, like, does it look like it does in the movies where just everything yes. is, doesn't stop? Well, you also have the Dan Ryan Expressway. Okay. Um, it goes right into the loop and then out. Okay. You know, and I remember taking that, you know, to my aunt's house. Um, and we did that. Uh, I remember the buses um, had this long thing and it had cables. They were electric and they had grooves. They weren't like buses now. It, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was the elevated system and the trains and the buses, and, and they were, like, really old from the, like, 30s, I guess, that I remember seeing them when I was growing up. Uh, were you able to – what kind of uh, radius did you have? Like, uh, like now, Liam could barely walk to the mailbox before I'm like, you're not allowed to go anywhere else. Um, me growing up, we were able to go to the, the, the grocery store and a couple of other places. Uh, yeah. were you, was it at a time where stranger danger wasn't? There wasn't a stranger danger. There, there really wasn't. I remember being, um, seven, eight years old, seven years old, walking to school. And it was like five blocks away, six blocks. I remember being in grammar school and it was, uh, a mile away, we walked. It was eight blocks. So it was yeah, about yeah. a mile. And we walked to that all the way to eighth grade. And then high school, we walked to high school, <laughs> which was two miles away. So we walked two miles in the snow, not uphill, <laughs> but we did. We walked with our galoshes and whatever um, in the snow to school, grammar school and high school. Every once in a while, we would take a bus. I think it was um, 35 cents for a week pass or something like okay. that. Uh, what kind of music did you listen to pre-high school? Like the early stuff, like Bobby Darren, uh, Paul Lanka, uh, James Dean, uh, Jimmy Dean. Um did some Elvis, but it was normally, you know, uh, yeah, Frankie Avalon, yeah, the Mickey Mouse Club, mm-hmm. which had a different M I C K E Y M O U S A. That's how they do it now. Um, they changed that a little bit for the new kids. Yeah, but. Uh, Annette Funicello and you know, all the uh, the Disney movie team things going on. That was uh, grammar school. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to go to uh, Disneyland until I was 20-something. You ended up doing the one in uh, California? California, yeah. Um. Elementary school. How big are? How big is a like a, a class? Like your your class of uh, thirty. There was thirty people okay. in a class. Twenty five to thirty was average. Um, Learn the same basic stuff that we still do now. Oh uh, no, basic stuff back then was basic. Uh, now math is so weird. Um, the new math mm-hmm. and how they're teaching it is strange. Um, I don't, I don't get it. I, when I help the kids, it's, you know, when they do their, their homework for after school, uh, I do it my way. Right. And then I try to explain it. Well, it can be done this way or it can be done this way, you know, and to prove a math problem or improve a, a division problem, you have to do some math. Right. And then math is, there's adding along with, you know, subtracting. It, you always have a double system in right. math, but today I don't know how they do it. Uh, 
it, Liam asked me for help and I looked at it and I just knew the answer and I knew how I got to the answer. And he's like, well, we have to write it out. And I said, I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> I said, I could tell you how I got there. So, but I don't know how to write it in the the new fangle yeah. way that you guys need it. So like now in high school, you got to have some variation of like, uh, like a geometry or like a calculus or something. Yeah. You guys were just like, can you, can you divide, can you multiply, add, divide, boom, you're good. Yes, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. I didn't take any math in, in, in high school. I took a science uh, history in grammar school. We had geography. Uh, the basics, yeah. you know, English, and then home ec. In home ec, you actually got to sew. I, the first thing I ever made was an apron. We had cooking. That's like the most like fifties, sixties thing you could have done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that where you did you always like sewing? Because I know you're you're uh, it's, uh, you like to sew now, same shirts of, of sorts. Uh, yeah, I, of sorts. Yeah, My, when uh, I took sewing in high school, and then I found out my mother growing as we grew, she made all our clothes. Okay. She made the twin clothes. She made her own winter coat, and it was a wonderful coat. I, I remember her, watching her make her own coat. It was long and winter, it was purple. Um, but my mom taught me a lot about sewing. She taught me how to do a French seam. And <laughs> uh, when Rhiannon I uh, got into sewing in her early 20s. She used to come over to my house every Friday and we would sew. Uh, we patterns and I'd show her how to do this, how to do that, how to read a pattern, which is something I learned right before her because my mom said, well, you do this, you do that, you know, you make your own patterns. When I was sewing for my husband doing stage clothes, um, it was hit and miss. I never had a pattern. Mm. I took a pattern apart and made that the pattern, you know. Did you construct it? Oh, yeah. And uh, so my mom taught me a lot of sewing. I passed it on to Rhiannon. She, in fact, I have her sewing machine. I'm, I'm taking care of it until she ever wants it. Back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pre-high school, what kind of kid were you, and how did you differ from your sister? Um, I think I was an extrovert. She was an introvert. Uh, grammar school. I think it switched the other way around. Uh, in high school, I was a, I, I was a quiet one. She was more flamboyant or whatever. She had a lot of dates and stuff. I, I hung around with a lot of kids. Uh, we had a pack of kids, guys and girls, that we would all hang together at the uh, at the park. And uh, my friends, not my sister's friends. She had some other friends that I knew who kind of like grew up in high school together, you know. Um, we just hung out. We would go to the park. We would ride our bikes. You Were you a reader? No, not until after high school. Uh, girly girl dresses, flowers in the hair, climbing trees, falling out, getting dirt. Mm, yeah, well, <laughs> well, you 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 take the bikes and we go down these paths in the in the forest. There's trees someplace in Chicago, and uh, we would. We would explore and, and we never got in trouble. Okay. Never got in any trouble. We we just didn't do that stuff. And uh, were you and your sister always together? Um, I think until we got to high school. Then she had her friends. I had my friends. 
same classes in school? Like same teacher? Um, they try to split you up. Grammar school, always the same class. Okay. Uh, all the way to eighth grade. Uh, high school, they, of course, they split us up because we had, we did have one class together. We had a Spanish class together. We decided we were going to learn Spanish. But you would have already been speaking Spanish? No, we forgot Spanish. Oh, okay. By high school. We forgot Spanish by age three, <laughs> four. But anyway, um, uh, we both flunked. I found out later that she took Spanish two years in a row and flunked both years. Oh. But she had the same teacher. I guess the teacher didn't like us. Okay. There was a personality thing with the teacher. And I said, oh, I can, I can see that now. You're Spanish. You, you should it. be better at this. Yeah. Since it was our first language. Right. Uh, I don't know. Then we took fencing together. Then in high school? High school fencing, yeah. Uh, before we go high school, what is your favorite memory pre-high school? It's like... 12, up to 12. What's it like? Something up that you remember? 12? Yeah. Well, it was always roller skating. I don't know why. Even outside the house, we would get our street roller skates and up and down the roller skating. Then it was bicycles. But uh, it was always dancing because uh, we were dancing at 12. You just. I'm sorry. You liked the music, you just got to dance. 50s and 60s rock and roll. Yes, it was all dancing and singing. and Yeah. When was Elvis's Ed Sullivan show? Was that in the. That was in the six. I want to say that was like. Because um, I don't think it was. I thought it would have been before the Beatles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Way, way before the Beatles. But Beatles would have been like what? It had like to be 70s, late 60s. Right? I think. Hold on, we're going to look it up here, guys. Uh, oh, this, Ed Sullivan. I remember that show. I remember seeing that show. Uh, 57. 57. All right, so yeah, you're just dancing away. Mm-hmm. Roller skating? I graduated dancing. from school in 58. Okay. High school in 62. Lots of dancing. And we, we we would walk to Brookfield Zoo, and that was like five miles. Okay. Cause we, Big zoo? Yes. Would it be la, one of the bigger zoos in that area? of? Because uh, like every once in a while, like the San Diego Zoo is supposed to be like the best. No, know. San Diego Zoo is just far apart. Okay. Brookfield Zoo, you had the monkeys, and right next to that you had the lions, and right next to that you had a cantaloupe, right next to that, because you could walk to everything, you know, and just over there, and you know, half a block away, you had a different exhibit. Uh, California, San Diego Zoo, you had to walk three blocks to get to the next exhibit, because it's so big. Right. So when we went to the San Diego Zoo, we halfway through we seen this tram. We got up, <laughs> and we looked around, and we got off the tram, and we left. Yeah. Um. The only thing close to it was the Denver Zoo was good. Okay. Uh. If you can go back any one day okay. and really relive again, pre twelve. What one day would you want to go back and do? Oh, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Three twelve. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> twelve is when mom and dad separated, right. so it would have to be the family. Okay. Okay. Mother's side of the family. Okay. My aunt Teresa was a flamenco dancer. Okay. And she had a party, and she called it Flamingo's Hideaway. And us kids, and I remember being like 12, going into the basement. There's a three-story house. My aunt lived on top, and my grandmother, and the bottom was just a basement. And we had a 
big yard and we, and there was coal. They burnt coal. <laughs> and I, and I just remember having so much fun because there was dancing, there was music and all of us kids had coal on our face and, and we would look at each other and, and oh, you know, and it was a fun thing to do. Just run up and down the streets and whatever. And that was a happy time that I remember. Fernando's uh, Highway Party. Flamingo Dancing Party. Pre-12. We're going to go ahead and end it there for part one of the first part of the trilogy with uh, Rhea. Come back on Wednesday for the second half of the first part. And uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you. Whimsy.